All right guys, next step in the ultrasonic sensor level lab. So we have our current value coming in on the screen there on our Cinex view. Uh, we have lost uh, communications, we'll get that going in two seconds. Uh, but you can see over here on the lab volt component that we have no signal coming in here. So I'm gonna walk you through how to get that current to come into this program right here. Let me start off with the wiring first though. Okay, back to this interface here for the ultrasonic sensor. So we were looking in the previous video at the four to 20 milliamp output, and we had that going through our ammeter, and we were able to see that current value on our ammeter. Now we wanna see that value on our uh, lab volt LV ProSim display. But our LV ProSim works off of a one to five volt signal or a zero to five volt DC signal. So how do we take that four to 20 milliamp signal and change it into a voltage so that, that software can see it? Well, it's as simple as putting in a 250 ohm resistor. So we need a 250 ohm resistor. So what I've done is I've just taken one of the jumper wires, I've cut it in half and I've soldered in our 250 ohm resistor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna connect it up to our four to 20 milliamp output. And if you use Ohm's law, which I'll show you on the screen in two seconds, with four to 20 milliamps and a 250 ohm resistor, you can get a one to five volt signal out. Okay, so let's see how simple this is. We have four milliamps, we have 0 0.004 amps. We're gonna pump that through a 250 ohm resistor and that's gonna give us one volt. When we have 20 milliamps, so 0 0.020 amps, we pump that through a 250 ohm resistor, it's gonna give us five volts. So four milliamps is gonna give us one volt up to our 20 milliamps, which is through a 250 ohm resistor is gonna give us five volts. So a four to 20 milliamp signal can quickly and easily be changed into a one to five volt signal with a 250 ohm resistor. So again, we're gonna connect in our resistor, which I've soldered into this jumper wire here. Right, so there's my resistor here. So that 250 ohm resistor is gonna go across my four to 20 milliamp output. Okay, so now I have four to 20 milliamps flowing across a 250 ohm resistor. And if I just take the voltage readings across these two terminals, I should be able to read one to five volts out. Now in order for that one to five volt signal to go into my LV ProSim program, I'm gonna take one meter lead right here and I'm gonna connect it in parallel with that resistor. So again, remember I have that 250 ohm resistor there and I'm gonna take that lead right there and I'm gonna put it into this terminal right here on my IO interface. So right now I have my input number one and I'm gonna connect it into input number one on my IO interface, making sure that the dip switch above is set for five volts. Okay, in order to reference the other side, I'm gonna take the negative and connect it into the common. Okay, so I'm gonna connect up another lead. I just grabbed a red, should have grabbed a black, but this is the only one I could find. So I'm gonna take another lead and I'm going to reference that down to the negative of my power supply. So I'm gonna put that guy right there. And that way I'll be able to look at the voltage. You can see now that uh, the common here on my four to 20 milliamp output is referencing the common on my power supply. And that power supply is also referencing the same common on my IO interface. So all of my commons are jumpered together. If you don't jumper all your commons together, uh, you're gonna get some funky voltages happening. Okay, next step, we're gonna connect the meter in so we can actually look at that voltage and make sure it's the same as what we're gonna see on the computer screen. You'll notice that from the previous lab where we looked at current, let me just zoom in here. So from the previous lab where we looked at current, I took that meter lead out of the 400 milliamp terminal here and I brought it back to the voltage terminal. Okay, we're gonna be in parallel with that resistor. We're gonna see that voltage uh, and that voltage is gonna be a DC voltage. So we're gonna change this to reference DC voltage. Okay, then we're gonna take our meter leads and we're gonna go in parallel with our 250 ohm resistor. Okay, so my meter leads are now referencing the same voltage as I have across my resistor. So you can take a meter reading here across your four to 20 milliamp output, or you could also take a meter reading uh, between 
this terminal right here and your common because those essentially are the exact same two wires. Okay, we have a mess of wires going around now. Uh, now that everything's connected up and our meter has been switched over to DC voltage, now we're going to turn this guy on. And remember from the previous uh, labs, once I turn that power off, I lost communication with the ultrasonic sensor. So let's get that rock and rolling and then we'll be able to see that voltage come in on the meter. All right, beauty. It looks like as soon as I turn that power on, uh, then the, the communication with the ultrasonic sensor was restored. If we didn't have communication, then we would go to uh, sensor and we would go to connect and we connect into the sensor. But it looks like everything's rock and rolling because I'm getting my current value of four milliamps here for my lowest value. Okay, so we're at 10 centimeters, right, our lowest value. And that voltage that's coming in right now is one volt. Remember we said that four milliamps through a 250 ohm resistor was gonna give us one volt out. Awesome. That current that's coming out, again, should be four milliamps. So on our Cinex view, you can see here that we have four milliamps coming out for our lowest value in the tank. Okay, so I've turned my pump on. I'm gonna open the valve. I'm gonna get this guy to go up to 20 centimeters. Very nice. Okay, so we're now at 20 centimeters. Let me stop the pump so you can hear me talk. So 20 centimeters, and every 10 centimeters should correspond to a one volt increase. So here you can see here that my voltage is basically two volts, and that is because I have a value of eight milliamps flowing through that 250 ohm resistor. Nice, let's go up by 10 centimeters again and see how our values go up. Okay, we're now at 30 centimeters, that's halfway. Halfway is going to give me three volts out. So let's make sure we have the right voltage on our meter. So 30 centimeters is corresponding to half of our one to five volt signal at three volts. Very nice. And half of our four to 20 milliamp signal is 12 milliamps there. So everything's working out nicely. Okay, we're at 40 centimeters now. 40 centimeters should be giving me four volts out. Let's just double check. Beautiful, I'm getting four volts out. And that four volts is coming from the fact that I have, sorry for the camera work, I have 16 milliamps flowing through a 250 ohm resistor. All right, last step guys, we'll go up to our highest end of the range. All right, highest end of the range, we're at 50 centimeters now. We're having a one to five volt signal correspond to a 10 to 50 centimeter range. So at 50 centimeters, I should be seeing five volts. Gorgeous, 4.955, that's as close as I can get it. So that 4.955 is coming from the fact that I should have 20 milliamps now flowing. And there's my 20 milliamps flowing across the 250 ohm resistor. So hopefully that's been able to quickly show you how to take a four to 20 milliamp signal and change it into a one to five volt signal by simply pushing it through a 250 ohm resistor.